Let's talk about Julio, what he was first, right? Julio Jones was a butt killer. I mean, this this guy, I'm not telling you guys anything you don't already know. Yeah. Right? This, <laughs> this, this guy was trouble for the Buccaneers. 114 catches for 1,814 yards, a 16.2 yard average. That shows you the big playability. Six foot three, 220 pounds. This guy had 11 touchdowns against the Buccaneers in 16 games. And he had a 10 and six record against Tampa Bay all time. So Julio Jones was one of those players that I think a lot of Buccaneer fans were very happy was traded outside of not just Atlanta, but outside of the division. Playing this guy twice a year was tough, Matt. Nine 100 yard games against the Buccaneers. <laughs> okay. Jeez. And everybody remembers that, or I shouldn't say everyone remembers. I'm sure some people have tried to forget that 12 catch, 253 253 yard game with two touchdowns in a 34 to 27, I'm sorry, 34 to 20 win in 2017. So this guy had a, a tremendous career, not just in Atlanta, but against the Buccaneers, right? He played against the Buccaneers for eight seasons. He, he did miss both games. In two years due to injuries, he, he was on, he was on injured reserve in 2013, and then this past season in 2020, or I should say, his last season in Atlanta in 2020, the wheels fell off the wagon, literally mm-hmm. and figuratively. The hamstring injuries began. Right, he missed both games against the Buccaneers in 2020, and of course, the Buccaneers swept the Falcons that year with Tom Brady's arrival, but. Those injuries continued into Tennessee. This is a player now. He's not the same guy he was. He's missed 13 games over the last two years due to hamstring injuries. And at 33, that's a recurring problem now. And I think that's a big reason why not only did the Titans cut him, especially making $11.5 million a year, but nobody's rushed out there to sign him either, Matt. Right. The money for that is just way too much. I mean, you look at his numbers from last season with the Titans only played in 10 games. So that means he missed with an extra game this year. He missed seven games this year, 31 receptions for 434 yards and one touchdown. And of course, as you said, a hamstring injury, that's usually a lingering thing. And so when it comes to whether the Bucs would want him, it's it's a consistency thing. Now, I do yeah. think that he could fit in that limited role. But when I look at it, too, and it's funny because, again, just reading up on Julio Jones and some of the things, he still showed some flashes of, oh, this is the all-pro, one of the greatest wide receivers in Julio Jones that we've seen before. I mean, you look at week two, early on in his career with the Titans, he had a game of six receptions for 128 yards. Like, that's a vintage Julio Jones uh, setup. And so the first game of the season and that game, he played over – 70%, 70%, I believe over 75%. After that, though, he didn't even play 70% of the snaps again until much later in the season. Yeah. Um, if you look at his wheelhouse yeah, a little and, bit more. And when, when, you, when you look at, at Tennessee, he had one 100-yard game. That was in week two, as you mentioned, I think against Seattle. And then he had his lone touchdown in the last week of the season, week 18, against the Texans, right? Yeah, and that game, too. So, at least for him, that game, he – did okay five receptions for 58 yards and a touchdown and then you go to that playoff game uh, where they lost to the Bengals six receptions for 62 yards so yeah. I think if he were to come to the Bucks, we'd be looking at that type of production he had a lot of duds in there as well too like towards the end of the season uh one catch four catch for 33 yards is okay mm-hmm. two catches in a game three catches I think if he were to come to the Bucks, and again he's going to be playing behind Mike and Chris and probably Russell Gage too. If Julio Jones gives you a game where he gets four receptions, 40 something yards, maybe scores a touchdown in the red zone. Yeah. I think that's kind of what our expectations has to be for Julio Jones. Can he turn it up here and there? Yes. But consistency is always going to be key. And he's been hurt over the last two years. I think you can keep him fresh by limiting his snaps. And if he only plays in that 55% of the offensive snap range, I really Mm -hmm. think he could be valuable to this team. Now let's remember Tom Brady. He's known for taking a lot of guys that were, you know, are on drafted late round picks, the Julian Edelman's, the West Welkers and turn them into great receivers. But when Tom Brady has studs with them, Mm -hmm. 
we all remember when Rand, I, I, I get it. It was over 10 years ago. But, you know, when Randy Moss came there, they had the greatest season of all time statistically right. between quarterback and wide receiver. And Randy Robert Moss had, had a bad year out in, in Oakland before that, yeah. too. I mean, there no, was some 100%. talk that he was kind of washed up a little bit, right? I mean, that was uh, that's a, very interesting that you bring that up about Randy Moss. And, and I'm not sure if if at age 33, Julio Jones can revert back to old form or not. But, but boy, if he could, right? And the interesting thing, too, is he's had these hamstring injuries. The Buccaneers, as an organization, dating back to 2019, dating back to, unfortunately, last year with Cyril Grayson and Brashad Perriman, mm -hmm. they've had some hamstring injuries. I'd like to think that that they're getting well-equipped in terms of how to deal with that. We saw Mike Evans not have a hamstring injury last year, which was good. It was a good yeah. sign. So. <laughs> So maybe that's this is an environment where he can come and thrive and and regain a little bit of that old form. But Matty, even like you were saying, if he's the fourth wide receiver and splitting time, uh, when Chris Godwin's healthy and all of that, uh, with with uh, Russell Gage, who he knows from Atl Atl the Atlanta days, th th I'm not opposed to bringing this guy in. The the key though is going to be price. The, the price or in the role because. When you're looking at at Julio Jones, you're saying we've already signed Russell Gage for ten million dollars, right? Mike is making what sixteen million. Chris is at twenty, mm -hmm. so we're not going to pay you certainly anywhere close to what any of those three guys are making. And you're thirty three. You you're coming up your worst year statistically. Yeah, Antonio Brown was only signed for a couple million. R Richard Sherman was only signed for a couple million. That's the type of of deal you're going to have to contend with do you want a super bowl ring or not right and and that's the point scott because i if i'm looking at this from julio jones like yes you want to be on a team that you have a chance to win and more importantly a chance to contribute and be yeah. what you once were i for julio jones he's not going to get that money from the bucks or at least the money that he wants to get and there are a lot of other contenders that are missing wide receivers or recently traded away wide receivers that were probably looking for someone like yeah. well, Julio Jones. I mean, you look at the NFC alone, you saw Dallas get rid of, they traded uh, Amari Cooper. Right. I mean, I think Julio Jones would much rather be the number two wide receiver in Dallas than the number four wide receiver with the Bucks. What about Green Bay? They traded Devontae Adams. Sure, they drafted uh, our guy Christian Watson, but you know, I think Julio Jones, would you want to play with Aaron Rodgers and you're going to be the number two? Yeah, I think yeah. he'd sign up for that. Kansas City, same thing with Tyreek Hill. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they replaced him. They got uh, Juju Smith-Schuster. But I still think there would be room for Julio Jones where he would probably get more touches, more production in those offenses than coming here and just being, right. you know, a, a security issue, a security blanket for the Bucs. I he just wonder, though, him. Matt, if at this stage, if – at age 33, if Julio Jones takes a, a proper assessment of himself and says, mm -hmm. I hardly practiced last year because of my hamstring. Yeah. It, it aggravated the, the the Titans coaching staff, right? They got rid of me. This is what I am now. Um, I know my body. I probably can't play 17 games, right? Maybe I don't want to be a number two receiver. But when I'm with the Buccaneers, if I'm number four on the depth chart, what does number four in the depth chart mean? Now, granted, again, as you mentioned, correctly so, Tyler Johnson played a lot of reps for Chris Godwin down the stretch, right? Yeah. He played a lot of reps for Antonio Brown when Brown was, was hurt and suspended. But that that was 36 catches for 360 yards, mm -hmm. a 10-yard average, which is pedestrian at best, and no touchdowns. And if you look at, at the numbers you just read off for Julio Jones in – you know, in his games with the the Tennessee Titan. Titans last year, right? It's it's not that far off. The production's actually better, right? As uh, in, in terms of of the catches and the production. I mean, he had thirty one catches, four hundred and thirty four yards. That's a fourteen yard average. He can still do some things better than Tyler Johnson yeah. uh, with with the ball in his hands. He still is six foot three. 220 pounds, I'd, I'd imagine he could still go up and high point a ball, right, on a fade pass. Um, he's going to be a little faster. 
not as as he used to be, but faster than Tyler Johnson. So <laughs> may, maybe he looks at this and says, well, um, I can get at least what I got in Tennessee in Tampa Bay because Tyler Johnson got it, but I'm better than Tyler Johnson, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be more productive, oh, and I might make the playoffs and, and win a Super Bowl ring with Tom Brady too instead of him beating me despite being <laughs> up 28 to three in, in the last Super Bowl I played against the guy. Yeah, he wants to be part of that team that comes back right. from 28 to three or 27 to three, like the Bucs almost yep. did uh, last year. Yeah, I think that's really what it's going to come down to. Does, does Jones want to get paid and have the opportunity to be a uh, number one or number two and recapture some of the, uh, you know, the skills that he once had? Or as you said, does he understand that his body isn't going to hold up as much anymore? Is he just solely focused on winning a ring? Then, yeah, probably going to Tampa Bay and playing with Tom Brady. Who goes to the Super Bowl every other season? Uh, so he's on <laughs> right. his track record is 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 on point to go again this year.